Hey everyone, today we have a pretty easy inspection. It's like a 2006, 2200 square foot home. But first I wanna thank you. Uh, the YouTube channel has gone over 6,000 subscribers and as soon as it hits 6,000 subscribers, we almost hit, almost hit 6,100 literally over a weekend. So that's, that's pretty crazy. Also, uh, thank you for listening to the podcast. The podcast, as soon as we uploaded it, hit like 200 views in a day, which uh, I'm surprised that many people want to listen to um, me and Josh talk about home inspections, but that's pretty cool. So a little problem solving. The reason why I'm at this property is uh, there's a new scheduling software. I guess it's not really new, but there's a master lock with a Bluetooth, and the only way you can access it is through this Showing Times app. So if you're a home inspector in the field and you watch these videos keep an eye out for this new software because uh, we don't really know what we're getting into I'm gonna see if I can try to unlock it uh, with the app and uh, see what happens they said that it would show up in the app like the appointment and stuff and it's not there so the reason why I drove over here is to help make sure Mark stays on time because he has two jobs today and I'm gonna help problem solve with that so let's go start this inspection and let's see what we're gonna go find let's go check it out Okay, I was able to get the door open, but if you want to look at what it looks like, this is what the box looks like. It's a little master lock. A master lock with a, a Bluetooth capability, and I had to stay on customer service for like 15 minutes uh, unlocking this, uh, this box right here. And uh, um, so if you do have this on your, on your property that you're going to inspect, Make sure that you a lot like show up 30 minutes extra early because you're gonna be on the phone for a minute if it's the first time you've been using this app. It doesn't seem like they have all their processes down yet. Uh, maybe it's the next thing that might be replacing Supra. We don't know. Um, just always stay on your toes and always adapt in the marketplace because stuff like this can trip you up and set your whole day behind. All right, um, let's, let's move to the roof. On the roof, uh, we actually had to scale the roof, pull the ladder up to a lower area, and then put it up on a higher, uh, the higher the patio, and climb up there. Not ideal, um, but I, I really like walking roofs over the drone. But the only thing that was really wrong with it, it's about a 10 year old roof, maybe 15, 14 years. But the only thing really wrong is all the plumbing boots, all the plumbing boots. Are, are done and they should replace them when they move in or they're gonna have water leaks. I bet we find water leaks in there. All right, let's uh, go see what Mark's doing in the kitchen. Okay, while Mark is working in the, the kitchen, I'm gonna leave him be for a minute, uh, let him set up. What I'm gonna do is uh, walk around the exterior. But while I walked out to the exterior, the first thing I noticed was this detached shed. If you're inspecting in Texas, we're not Texas inspectors are not required to inspect or even really look at anything detached from the main structure. But I always like to look in there real quick just to do a quick scan around if there's termites, looking for termites or WDIs because this is an easy spot to get WDIs. A lot of people don't walk in those. It's quiet and it's made out of wood. So let's see uh, if we find anything in there. When you're scanning in these sheds, I always start from the top and then kind of do like a box formation and look around a lot of people get like this uh, granule type of the uh, dirt they get that confused with termites typically that is associated with ants but whenever I was scanning over here in the shed you see you see some more of it so there's some ant activity in here but up here I noticed that there was some mud right here shelter tubes look close to this but this actually looks more like this was from construction. Uh, you can see that the, the mud doesn't go anywhere, it's not in a line, and it doesn't uh, travel up the wood from the ground at all. So that you just want to take all the context into play. No, we're not required, again, we're not required to look at that, but whenever I'm inspecting a property, I try to gather as much information as possible for the client. You never know. they. You never know the client's story, and th that shed could have been the, one of the main reasons why they purchased the property. So if I walked in there and I found termites everywhere, then uh, they may have changed their opinion on how they negotiate the property. So 
All right, let's see, uh, let's see what we find on the outside. A good spot to find termites is actually in between the back patio and the fiber cement boards, especially whenever the, the fiber cement is so close. So if you're inspecting or you're looking at a property, make sure that you're always looking in between these boards real close and look for the shelter tubes coming in between this little crack right here. They can get in through spaces this small uh, whenever they're accessing your property for wood or food. Uh, another spot, the reason why it made me think about that is you have the wood rotted trim, easy ride up. Um, we did not find any termites on this property. It's just mainly me letting you know where I look for them. And then this is even more of an area where you would expect to find them. You know, this wood's a little bit more soft and you, ooh, what, what's this? That, <laughs> that might be termites. Let me get my uh, little tool here. Okay, so I dug around there for, you know, maybe five minutes or so and I couldn't pull any active termites in. So the next step is, is I always come inside the property in the area where I may have thought I found them. And um, I'm not seeing any wood rot or, you know, damage or tubes in the wall. I see one thing that's kind of suspicious. So you have uh, this mark right here and you can kind of see how it's a little dirty around the hole there and what happens is the swarmer tubes will come out and you can see that this property is uh, freshly painted uh, ready for the flip for the people to come in so what I do is I document this as termite activity can't call it active because I didn't see termites but I could say previous termite infestation or activity and also, I can also say that there's no evidence of treatment, so that it's recommended to treat the property in this location. So, pretty good uh, first find, just walk around the exterior of the structure. So, you know, that's exactly what I was saying. It's really funny, you know, say, you know, focus on the areas where the fiber cement's close, where the wood rod is, and boom, ran right into a shelter tube. So, really uh, take your time and pay attention as you walk around the structure and look in those spots because that shelter tube was hidden. If I was standing up and looking there, I don't think I would have found it. Here you go, another good spot is if you have access to like a main drain line, this is a good spot to look for uh, termites because water travels through, through here a lot and they can follow the line of the pipe. But whenever you start to see like ant debris, uh, stuff like this normally means that there's no termites presence because ants like to eat termites. But uh, I'm not seeing anything in there, it looks pretty clean. Another thing I like to do, uh, a lot of inspectors recommend not to do this, but I do it mainly for clients, is I just like to, the main shutoff, I just like to wiggle it just a little to make sure that if the client, you know, can easily operate and shut off the water if they need to. Um, as a home inspector, you do put yourself at risk because if this breaks, technically somebody could hold you liable for it. But what I always like to say is if it's going to break on me, it was gonna break on them and I much rather find it uh, for my clients. Okay, crawling up in the attic. The very first thing I notice walking up into the attic, it's really cool. So that's either two things. It's, uh, it's ventilated really well, or uh, there's a broken duct somewhere. This is Texas. Typically, it's a broken duct or separated duct, but who knows? Let's, let's, let's vote for uh, better, uh, better ventilated. So whenever you do feel that, just make sure that you pay extra special attention to all the ducts to try to find that, that split duct work. Duck, duct work. Okay, scanning around. I didn't really see any separations in the duct work. The only thing that I really don't like is uh, how it's it, it's laying on the ground in a few spots, like right here, can cause them to condensate and underperform. 
pretty common write up for an older property though the uh, it's not suspended correctly and we have those in our comments uh, or for sale on homeiw.com another pretty common find that you want to call out all the time is the dryer vent isn't sealed properly and you can see that there is some dryer lint laying in this in the attic space but what r the real concern part is you can see it's actually resting on top of the water heater and uh, the dryer lint is uh, very combustible so this this is one of the leading causes of home fires moving on to the water heater since we're over here looking at it a uh, very easy spot you can see that there's water in the pan and the pan's starting to rust through and then right here the source of the water leak is actually right here you can see the corrosion at the uh, the shutoff and uh, we got a water droplet right there uh, pretty pretty good find and can save the client hundreds of dollars cha-ching uh, next spot is whenever I was walking around the exterior I saw that the uh, the outside condenser has been replaced so if you ever see that make sure that the coils match the outside condenser and right here these coils allow R22 or 410 Freon it allows both uh, but the the biggest thing is is you want to make sure they match because I've seen a lot of people like replacing their condensers outside but the uh, the coils only are rated for R22 and the condensers rated for R410 so um, it's you just need to make sure or the uh, or the tonnage is out uh, they don't match either so uh, you definitely want to pay a special attention to the labels whenever you're inspecting a property other things that make you go hmm during an inspection is if you ever see a bucket further investigate why the bucket is there there's always a reason okay so we got mark into that property a uh, super easy property to inspect in my opinion we always we're always going to find something uh this one you know termites and the water leak at the water heater uh pretty easy spots for any inspector so what i'm going to do uh what i'm going to do mark's doing a good job so i'm going to head to john and see where he's at he's a little bit older property it's only like 12 minutes down the road so follow me along okay showed up john's looking good uh he had the zip level out when i showed up so uh, it looks like he already spotted some foundation movement to the structure um let's talk about foundation movement real quick a lot of inspectors fail and they say that foundation movement is foundation failure not all movement on slabs indicate that the slab is failing all our slabs always fluctuate they're designed to float so just because you have foundation movement do not report that the foundation is failed uh, when I first walked up to the property I noticed that the garage has dipped quite a bit and they were covering it up with caulking you know it was like bigger on the top and thinner on the bottom and then I walked around the corner and there was separation between the door showing that that wall has shifted a little bit uh, and then you can see that the grading was a little off in that area, obviously leading to the water movement around that area, causing the property to shift. Going into the structure, I noticed that the, you know, the caulking lines were off around in the kitchen where the crown molding was flush in some areas, but in the other areas, they used a thin bead of white caulking to show, to make it look level. So those things can, you know, send off warning signs, but you always want to get a full evaluation before you come up with an opinion. We also didn't notice there was any type of PVC around the property in that there's cast iron in some of the bathrooms. Well, what happens is, is sometimes they'll repair these foundations and they break the underground plumbing and whenever they break the underground plumbing they go about their lives they keep living and they keep pouring water underneath the structure which causes more movement so on this one what we recommended for was a sewer scope scan before they continued with the property because we cannot see the underground plumbing you want to make sure that it's okay it's been repaired or uh, replaced we we don't know you know all homes move it's just a matter if it is true deflection or not and I guess if you are a new home inspector you can go ahead and jump that extra gun and recommend for a structural engineer if you don't know but I do recommend to take for more classes on trying to determine if a foundation is good or not because this is one of the biggest problems you're gonna run across in the Houston area or I guess not just in the Houston area, just as an inspector in general, is determining if the structure is sound or not, the foundation structure. So uh, that's it. So that's Chris with the action. Please hit that like and uh, 
button and leave a comment that really helps grow the YouTube channel and always subscribe. Catch us on the next one. See ya. Bye.